Today, Google proves things can still be made in the USA. If you use Facebook, you have a new email address, surprise, and no lungs, no blood, no problem. All that coming up after I remind you what this show is called. It's TextBank. It's called TextBank. Anyway, this week Google announced the Nexus Q, which they call the first social streaming media player. Everyone else is calling it Google's ripoff of the Boxy Box or Apple TV or Roku or whatever, take your pick. It looks cool and has some pretty interesting features, but that's not the news here. What's really interesting about the Nexus Q is that on the bottom it has the words designed and manufactured in the USA printed on it. I know what you're thinking. We make it here? What, are the Chinese too lazy to make it for us? Well, according to the New York Times, the trend of making things in China is showing signs of reversing. It's not just the rising labor costs, even though wages have come up substantially since two decades ago when things started moving to China, or the cost of transporting the goods back to the US, which has also gotten more expensive recently. And it's not just the risk of intellectual property theft, which China seems to not care about. Just think about what a common term Chinese knockoff has become. It's a combination of all those things, and in the case of Google engineers working on the Nexus Q, it's also the ability for someone designing a product to be able to get to the factory where it's made in a 10 minute drive instead of a 16 hour flight. Now, the Made in America label might be one of the most expensive parts on the Nexus Q. Will people be willing to buy it over the cheaper Apple TV because of the cool design and homegrown appeal of the Nexus Q? Time will tell. It starts shipping in two to three weeks. Up next, Facebook has been pulling some crap this week that isn't making people very happy. You might not have heard about it, so let me break the news. First, they told everyone where you are. And second, they changed your email address. For the first one, they were supposedly just testing a feature called Find Friends Nearby. It lets people see what Facebook users are nearby. Duh. And while I personally don't mind, people online freaked out. So a few days later, the feature was pulled. Then, Facebook decided that all their users would rather have at facebook.com email addresses listed as their primary email instead of whatever they had signed up with. Isn't that nice? Oh wait, no. It's retarded. It seems like they're trying to give everyone a gentle reminder about being able to use email addresses ending with at facebook.com to get messages in your Facebook inbox. But what if you don't want to? Or what if you're one of the people having problems with messages being sent to the other messages folder, which most people don't even know exists? Well, to change things back, log into Facebook and go to your timeline or profile page and select About. You can then change the email address Facebook shows other users back to the way it was before. You're welcome. Finally today, if you're in some sort of accident or have a disease like pneumonia, your lungs may become so damaged that your body, or more critically, your brain, will have a lack of oxygen. If that problem isn't fixed, and fast, chances are you'll have severe brain damage and possibly even die. So what to do? Well, you can't just inject oxygen into someone's veins because it can cause bubbles that'll block the flow of blood and then that can kill you too. There's also a machine that can externally oxygenate blood, but those are complicated and take way too long to set up in emergency situations. Enter Dr. John Keir at the Children's Hospital in Boston and a team of researchers who have come up with oxygen-filled microspheres that can be diluted in a solution and transfused into patients. In tests, they found that the oxygen transferred into the red blood cells within around four seconds. Studies in rabbits are also proving successful, and while more studies are needed to before the microspheres can be put into widespread use, it's just the kind of awesome medical news that'll definitely make people's lives better and help lots of patients come out of the hospital alive instead of dead, which is always a good thing. You know what else is a good thing? Liking TextBank on Facebook. Oh, and sending your friends links to the show. I find that way more people end up watching me go on about this science shit if they actually know about the show. Go figure. So, help spread the word. You can do that, and I'll go make another episode for you next Thursday. Until then, I'm James Papadopoulos. Thanks for watching.